10 gems that took the longest to form on earth, before diamonds sparkled or sapphires shimmered, before the first leaf, the first continent, or even the moon, some of Earth's rarest gems had already begun to form. Forged in volcanic fire, buried beneath tectonic plates, and sculpted by time beyond imagination, these stones aren't just beautiful, they're ancient. Each one took millions, even billions of years to crystallize, and today they reveal the oldest secrets our planet has ever held. These are the top 10 gems that took the longest to form on Earth. Don't forget to press and hold that like button, leave a comment, and hit subscribe before we begin. Ranked 10th, Lapis Lazuli, the blue that outlasted kings. Before sapphires claim royalty or diamonds marked love, another stone was older, deeper, and more sacred. Lapis Lazuli wasn't just admired. It was worshipped. This deep blue metamorphic rock, flecked with golden pyrite, has been mined for over 6,000 years. But its actual formation dates back 400 to 600 million years, forged during mountain-building collisions between ancient oceanic plates, formed under extreme heat and pressure in limestone-rich metamorphic belts, most notably in northeastern Afghanistan. Lapis isn't a single mineral. It's a composition of lazurite, calcite, pyrite, and sometimes sodalite. The finest grades exhibit a rich ultramarine hue with minimal white streaks and just enough gold speckle to suggest stars caught in twilight. In ancient Egypt, pharaohs ground lapis into powder to paint the eyelids of gods and queens. In Renaissance Europe, it was rarer than gold, used to create ultramarine, the most expensive pigment in art. Michelangelo's blues, lapis, Botticelli's skies, lapis. It once fetched more per gram than rubies, but despite its legacy, lapis fell from gem market dominance. Its softness, 5 to 5.5 on the Mohs scale, made it unsuitable for everyday jewelry. Mass-produced dyes and synthetic pigments replaced its artistic role. And with limited branding in the modern gem trade, lapis became a relic. Today, fine specimens, hand-carved or cut into polished cabochons over 20 millimeters wide, can sell for 200 to 500 US dollars per piece, but their market remains niche. It may not shine like a diamond, but no other stone has colored history itself. Ranked nine, Sphen, the fire hidden in ancient rock. A rare gem quietly crystallized in the hidden fractures of Earth's continental crust, where pressure reshapes stone and time rewrites chemistry. Sphen, known in gemology as titanite, isn't famous. But it should be. Why? Because it holds one of the most dazzling secrets in mineralogy. Light dispersion that exceeds diamond. Formed roughly 100 to 300 million years ago, Sphene grows in calcium and titanium-rich metamorphic zones, often alongside garnet and amphiboly. But its fiery brilliance has nothing to do with its rarity and everything to do with physics. Under the proper cut, Sphene explodes with color. Red green, gold, visible in flashes from even a 1.5 carat stone. Its dispersion index measures up to 0.051, surpassing diamonds 0.044. That means more fire, more spectral light, and more visual drama. And yet, Sphene has never ruled a showroom. Why? Because nature gave it brilliance, but not resilience. With a Mohs hardness of just 5 to 5.5, it scratches easily. Its crystal structure is brittle, prone to cleavage, and complex to facet without loss. Jewelers feared it, retailers passed on it, and over millions of years, Sphene remained locked in geology papers instead of jewelry cases. Today, clean specimens from Pakistan or Madagascar occasionally surface at mineral shows. Top stones over five carats fetch 1,000 to 3,000 US dollars and are prized by collectors, not consumers. Sphene isn't a gem that faded. It's a gem that never had its chance. Too brilliant for its own body. Ranked 8. Emerald. The green that waited half a billion years. Before it could ever dazzle in a ring or rest in a royal diadem, emerald required one of the rarest alignments in Earth's history. Beryllium-rich magma colliding with chromium-bearing rock under just the correct pressure, heat, and chemical conditions. 
That geological miracle doesn't happen often, and when it does, it takes time. Hundreds of millions of years, to be exact. Many of the world's finest emeralds, like those from Colombia's Muzo and Shavor mines, formed between 100 and 500 million years ago, often within fractures in black shale, slowly cooled and restructured by tectonic uplift. Unlike quartz or garnet, emerald doesn't grow in bulk. It emerges in narrow veins, surrounded by fragile host rock and riddled with inclusions. In gemology, these internal patterns are called jardin, French for garden, and no two are ever the same. But beauty came with fragility. Emeralds rank 7.5 to 8 on the Mohs scale, but their internal fractures often make them brittle. They're nearly always oiled to hide those flaws. Still, that didn't stop Cleopatra from hoarding them or Mughal emperors from carving prayers into them. Today, a top-quality Colombian emerald over 5 carats can fetch 50000 to 100000 U.S. dollars, rivaling diamonds in value. What makes emerald precious isn't just its color. It's the improbable patience of geology, a green that took half a billion years to bloom. Rank 7, Sapphire, the blue written in pressure. Not all blues are painted with pigment. Some are pressed into existence, forced into being over tens of millions of years as continents collide and bury minerals deep into Earth's crust. That's where sapphire begins, in the crucible of time, heat, and pressure. Sapphires, a variety of corundum, form when aluminum oxide crystallizes without silicon, a geological rarity. In places like Kashmir, Sri Lanka, and Madagascar, this alchemy occurred 150 to 200 million years ago, often during tectonic upheaval, as mountain ranges like the Himalayas were still embryonic folds beneath ancient seas. Their signature blue, caused by trace amounts of iron and titanium, doesn't settle uniformly, so no two sapphires look pretty alike. Some glow with a velvet softness, others burn with icy clarity. Like those from Kashmir, the most coveted stones shimmer with a deep blue that seems lit from within. Sapphire ranks 9 on the Mohs scale, just below diamond, making it ideal for jewelry meant to last generations. It has been engraved in royal seals, set in engagement rings, and mounted in ecclesiastical regalia for over a thousand years. Today, a fine, untreated sapphire of over 5 carats can fetch anywhere from $50,000 to over $300,000, depending on origin and saturation. But its value lies deeper than price. It's in its permanence. Sapphire is pressure remembered, millions of years carved into a single, silent flame. Ranked 6, Tanzanite, the violet tilt of time. At the base of Mount Kilimanjaro, beneath ancient folds of metamorphic rock sculpted by tectonic violence, lies one of Earth's youngest and most improbable gems. Tanzanite, a blue-violet variety of zoocyte, is geologically rare in beauty and origin. Formed approximately 585 million years ago during the East African orogeny, tanzanite required a precise and volatile cocktail. High-grade metamorphism, the infusion of vanadium, and slow cooling in pressure-stable zones. This convergence has occurred only once in one known place on Earth the Marilani Hills of northern Tanzania. Discovered in 1967 and brought to market by Tiffany & Company, tanzanite sparked immediate fascination. Under daylight, it leans blue. Under incandescent light, it flickers violet. This phenomenon, trichroism, means the gem can shift across three colors depending on the angle and light source. A properly cut stone, even just three carats, behaves like a living prism. But its geological youth hides a more profound truth, scarcity. The entire global supply comes from a single four-mile strip of land. No secondary deposits have ever been found. Today, fine untreated stones over five carats can command $1,000 to $3,000 per carat. But prices have surged as the mine nears depletion. Tanzanite is Earth's rarest coincidence, an accident of pressure, heat, in chemistry that may never happen again. Ranked five, garnet, the old blood of shifting continents. Some gemstones are formed in fire, others in fracture. But garnet, one of Earth's oldest surviving gem species, was born in collision, not once, but over and over again. Found in metamorphic belts across every continent, 
Garnet has been crystallizing beneath Earth's crust for nearly two billion years before the first trees and the supercontinents broke apart. These deep red silicate crystals appear wherever heat and pressure have remodeled the planet's skin, wedged in schist, gneiss, and eclogite, formed as tectonic plates grind, crash, and fold. Their durability is exceptional. Mohs 6.5 to 7.5 can withstand nature's violence in time. But garnet is not a single gem. It's a family. Almondine, pyro, spessartine, and grossular, each with a different chemistry and recording a different pressure and depth. Geologists use garnet as a time capsule. Its composition reveals the conditions under which continents collide. And yet, despite its ancient origins, garnet rarely commands high prices. It's too available, too familiar. A five-carat red almondine might retail for under $100, while rare color change or savorite garnets can break $1,000 per carat. But these are exceptions. Garnet isn't rare because it's scarce. It's rare because it's everywhere, but barely noticed. It's not a stone that demands your attention. It's one that's earned it quietly for two billion years. Ranked four, Alexandrite, the stone that changed with the light of two billion years. Most gems shimmer, some sparkle, but only one seems to shift personalities, depending not on your mood, but on the light itself. This is Alexandrite, a color-changing variety of chrysoberyl formed under such rare geological circumstances that it almost defies belief. Roughly two billion years ago, deep beneath what is now the Ural Mountains of Russia, Beryllium-rich magma intruded into chromium-bearing rock, a collision so geochemically improbable that it's happened in gem quality only a handful of times in Earth's entire history. The result? A crystal that, in daylight, flashes greenish-blue but, under incandescent light, glows rich red or purplish-violet. It's not a trick of the eye. Trickerwism is a complex optical property in which the stone absorbs different wavelengths based on light temperature. Under the right conditions, even a two-carat alexandrite appears to morph in real time, making it one of the most dynamic gems ever discovered. And yet, its story is just as dramatic. Named in 1834 for Tsarevich Alexander II, alexandrite was crowned Russia's imperial gem. But when the original Ural deposits ran dry, they nearly disappeared from the global market, only to be rediscovered in smaller veins in Sri Lanka, Brazil, and Tanzania. Still, none rival the electric transformation of the Russian stones. Today, top-quality alexandrite, clean over three carats with a substantial color shift, can command $20,000 to $70,000 per carat. It took two billion years to create a stone that changes twice daily, and yet, no matter the lighting, it never looks the same twice. Ranked three, Spinel, the twin that outshone its name. It sat on crowns and thrones for centuries, celebrated, revered, and utterly misidentified. Spinel, a magnesium aluminum oxide, formed deep within metamorphic rock over two billion years ago under the relentless compression of colliding continents. Its crystal structure is cubic, like a diamond. Its colors, intense reds and vivid pinks, rival rubies. And that's precisely what fooled the world for generations. Long before gemological science, Spinel was indistinguishable from ruby. The Black Prince's ruby, the centerpiece of the British crown jewels. Spinel, the Tamur ruby of the Mughal Empire. Spinel again. Not one monarch knew they were crowning their legacy with a geological misnomer. But in truth, Spinel deserved its crown. Unlike corundum, Spinel often forms clean, well-shaped octahedral crystals, some over 10 carats with stunning clarity. And it doesn't just come in red, covet blue spanels from Vietnam, lavender stones from Sri Lanka, and neon pink specimens from Myanmar are among Earth's most visually arresting gems. Some form during the Proterozoic Eon, making them older than multicellular life. Despite this, Spinel's market value long lagged behind rubies. Only in the last two decades has the gem world begun to correct the record. Today, a fine untreated Burmese red spinel over five carats can fetch $5,000 to $15,000 per carat, while rarer cobalt blue varieties have shattered expectations at auction. 
Spinell never needed Ruby's name to shine. It was never the understudy. It was the star the world hadn't recognized yet. Ranked 2. Diamond, the old fire in the mantle. Long before continents split or life crawled onto land, deep within Earth's mantle, something extraordinary began. Under unimaginable pressure and at temperatures near 2,200 degrees Fahrenheit, carbon reorganized itself, not randomly, but perfectly, into the hardest known natural substance on Earth, diamond. Some of these crystals formed 3.5 billion years ago when Earth was barely in its infancy. Others are younger, just a billion years old. Either way, most diamonds are older than dinosaurs, older than the oxygen-rich atmosphere, and older than the first leaf. But their journey wasn't over after formation. To reach the surface, they had to ride a geological explosion. Only rare volcanic eruptions, kimberlite pipes, were violent enough to blast diamonds from 90 to 120 miles beneath the earth to the crust. These eruptions were so fast that they delivered diamonds without destroying them. The result, small pockets of treasure locked in ancient rock, often buried beneath Africa, Siberia, or northern Canada. And yet, despite their age, diamonds are modern mythology. They've been marketed as eternal, romantic, indestructible. But the truth is more complex. Most diamonds are less than one carat when cut. Large, high-clarity stones over five carats can fetch 100,000 to several million U.S. dollars, depending on origin and color. But beneath the sparkle lies something humbler, something older. Diamonds aren't just a symbol of love. They're a relic of planetary violence, born in silence, carried by fire and polished by time. Polished. In first place, Zircon, the oldest crystal on Earth. Long before emeralds gleamed, diamonds crystallized, even before the moon existed. Zircon was already here. At 4.4 billion years old, Zircon is Earth's oldest gemstone and its oldest witness. Formed in our planet's chaotic infancy, when Earth's surface was still molten and continents didn't yet exist, Zircon crystallized from silicate magma in what would become the first crust fragments. Its tight and resilient structure allowed it to survive every cataclysm that followed. Asteroid impacts, supervolcanoes, continental drift, and even the emergence of life itself. Zircon doesn't just endure, it records. Within its atomic lattice, zircon traps uranium and thorium, elements that decay slowly, predictably, like a ticking planetary clock. Using these isotopes, scientists have dated zircon crystals to 4.375 billion years, revealing that liquid water and possibly habitable conditions existed just 100 million years after Earth formed. No other gem tells us that, and yet zircon is rarely celebrated. Its fire is subtle, and its presence humble. Gem-quality specimens, cut in round brilliance or ovals over three carats, can cost just $100 to $500 USD, depending on color and clarity. But the actual value of zircon isn't in its brilliance. It's in its memory. This isn't just a stone. It's a fragment of time itself, a crystal that survived creation, chaos, and everything since. These gems aren't just rare because of how they look. They're rare because of how long they took to become. Some of them survived asteroid impacts, shifting continents, and five mass extinctions to end up in a museum case, a miner's hand, or set in a ring. When you hold one of these stones, you have beauty and time. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to discover more treasures forged in deep earth and time, don't forget to like, subscribe, and join us on the next journey.